Hello. This is part two of the gravitational fields for Gauss's law. So part two. So relating this to electrostatics, recall that del or the curl of E equals zero for electrostatics. If it if it was if it was uh, electrodynamics, it wouldn't be zero. It would be minus dB dt. So in, in relating this to gravitational um, fields, you can say that this is equal to zero. You can check this that um, the curl of some vector field V equals the determinant of of I J K of d d d x d d d y d d d d x d y d z. So this is the curl in uh, Cartesian coordinates, and since if this guy is zero, we can s we can write that g equals minus the gradient of some scalar field phi. Okay, and another and also we can also say that if we have something moving in a in some particular path and it starts where it ends that the contour integral of g dot dl equals zero this means this is conservative it's path independent okay so as a nice summary that our gravitational fields that del cross g equals zero and g equals minus the gradient of phi and contour integral of g dot dl equals zero. Also we can say that um, to find phi that phi equals minus g dot dl. at some source point to a distance r. So for example, let's take a gravitational field of a point source. So this is um, g m over r squared, r hat. And let's bring this point from infinity to a point r. So this is minus infinity, or minus integral from infinity to r of g m over r squared dr or dl equal dr. If you look at the cylindrical conversion between dl and dr, you'll see. This is r hat. Okay, and so if we integrate this, you see that you get g m over r. This is the potential for a point. And you can easily, um, yes. So now, um, let's, so this is the uh, P of R equals G M over R. Oh, I'm sorry, this is minus. Okay. So now, if we do a, a summary that for a point mass that phi equals g m over r, this is for a point for a line, it's g integral of the mass density, I mean, the linear mass density dl over r, so line, the line density for a surface density, it's the total integral of sigma dA over R. And for the volume, it's G triple integral of the volume mass density, or mass volume density rho for R dV. Okay, so now recall that um, the divergence of G equals to four pi rho. Now, since g equals to minus the uh, divert the, the gradient of some scalar field d, phi, 
we can say that the Laplacian or grad squared phi equals to minus it should be a v there minus four pi g rho. Where uh, grad squared plus d squared <coughs> plus d squared. Okay, and for the um, gradient, this is i d x plus j d d y plus k d z. Okay. So now I'm going to show you guys if you have seen the You guys have seen uh, David Griffith's uh, introduction to electrodynamics. So you'll see a little triangle triangle relating the electric field, the charge density, volume charge density, and the scalar field. So this is similar to um, gravitational fields. So rho. So this is a summary. Rho, G, and Phi. So how do we get from G to Phi to Rho? Well, this is Gauss's law that del dot G equals to four pi four pi G Rho. Now how do you get from Rho to G? If you have rho, how do you get to g? Well, g is the capital G, the volume integral of rho over r squared dv r hat. Now, how do we get, if we have the gravitational field, how do we get from that to uh, the scalar field, d phi? Well, phi is just minus the so integral from the source point to uh, the distance r you're interested of g dot dl. And dl is the the area or the the, um, the distance uh, vector displacement vector. Now, if we have uh, phi, that's phi. If you have phi, how do we get to g? Well, that's very simple. It's just the uh, Minus the just minus the gradient of the scalar field phi. Okay. So. <coughs> so now, how do we get from so from the scalar field phi to rho? Well, I showed you guys earlier. It's just the Laplacian of the potential field equals to minus four pi g rho. So let me write that out. Minus rho equals minus four pi g rho. Now how do you get from rho to, how do you get from rho to phi? Well, how do you get from rho to phi? Rho equals, how do you get from, oh, it's, wait. oh sorry. This is backwards. This should be grad squared phi equals four pi g rho. This, on the other hand, if we have phi and we want to find, uh, if we want to go from rho to phi, oh, sorry, whoops. Ugh. Oh, okay, hold on. So how do you get from from rho to phi? So if I want to get from uh, rho to phi, we get grad squared phi equals to minus four pi g rho, and v phi equals uh, g triple integral of rho dv over r. That's how you find the the scalar potential. Okay, 
So now I've explained it to the triangle. So this is for uh, for uh, from let's see from phi to rho and from rho to phi. Okay. So now one last thing I like to talk to you guys about is uh, work and energy made from gravitational fields. So recall that work for a generic case is the integral of a to b of f dot dl. Okay. Now, similarly, if you have taken a physics class, you'll see that the work to con to assemble a a gravitational uh, energy to assemble gravitational energy is g times the double summation uh, from i equals one to n number of particles from j equals one to the number of particles of m i and j over r over the distance between r, the r i and r j <coughs> r i and r j and where j is greater than i okay so now from electricity and magnetism was shown that the work that could to assemble um, the work the energy generated from the system was the triple integral of one half the triple integral of the charge density times the scalar um, field v d tau but we can relate this to electricity and mag or gravitation so this is the equivalent and electricity and magnetism that they had um gauss's law that del dot e equals rho over epsilon naught So I'm gonna. So they use um, Griffiths used this, and that um, E equals minus the diversion or the gradient of phi v. So if we sub make these substitutions for rho and delta and uh, epsilon. We see that the work, the energy for a gravitational or electric field, it's epsilon naught over two, triple integral of the magnitude of the electric field squared, right? dv. Should be dv. So similarly for gravitational fields, that um, so this is for uh, em, not for gravity. That the divergence of g equals to four pi rho g. Okay. Now um, g equals minus the um, gradient of the scalar field phi. And for the work for gravitational field is therefore equal to make all these substitutions. We'll see that the work generated from the gravitational field is one over eight pi g triple integral of magnitude of gravitational field squared dv. So you can do the math and plug solve for rho, plug it in. You have to do integration of parts, and you'll see that one of them is zero, and then you will get these guys. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. More videos coming soon.